All right, so I've been seeing a lot of people are having issues with apps opening on Big Sur and they're throwing permission errors and they're saying you do not have permission to open the application, contact your computer and network administrator for assistance. I'm going to show you what I did to dig in and try to figure this out. Let you know that I'm on Big Sur 1101. This is one of the new M1 MacBook Airs. I have a 2019 Intel MacBook Air with Big Sur 1101 on it and Safari works. I'm going to show you the differences between the two versions and what they actually come up with when I run some different commands to try to take a look at the app signatures and whether Gatekeeper allows it or not. So first thing I'm going to do is open up terminal on the M1 Mac. So we're just going to open that up. We're going to blow this up. So we know that Safari does not work. So the first command that I want to actually run on this system to see what the signature looks like on this application. So I'm going to do code sign minus VV and then just applications, Safari. And we're going to confirm that it satisfies its designated requirement it's valid on the disk so from a code sign perspective this thing is looking good the other thing we're going to check is now we're going to check the signature itself and we're going to run pkg util dash dash check dash signature on that application and we're gonna see that signed by a certificate trusted by Mac OS it all looks good everything's looking okay for this app um, then I want to check to see make sure gatekeeper is okay SPCTL and dash AV on that applications Safari and we're going to run that and it is accepted by gatekeeper so everything's looking good on this system so how am i going to get this safari to actually work i was thinking of different ideas what i can do is it quarantined is there some sort of issue so if i actually run this extended attributes command and if I do application Safari, what some people might see when they run this is they might actually see com.apple.quarantine. And what that means is that that application is actually quarantined. So what I would do is I would arrow up, come back here, and I would do a minus D to remove this application from quarantine. I can do that it makes no difference because the application wasn't actually quarantined as we could see right here if we look right here it's got com apple rootless which means it's protected by sip and it does have this other data which you can actually clear this data out i did clear the data out i actually um took this application over to my Intel MacBook Air and it runs but what I found out on my Intel MacBook Air is that it actually shows different responses for each of these commands and actually tells me what is wrong with this application so that's what I want to do right now is I want to show you uh, we're going to remote into this Intel Mac, so I'm going to do screen, say, uh, screen sharing application. And I'm going to connect to it. If you don't know how to remote into another Mac, then you should definitely check out my how to remote into any Mac video. Um, All right, so here is my Intel Mac. This Mac 
has a different version that I'm just going to show you. If I, well, the first thing I'm going to do is I want to actually show you that if I take the M1 Safari, send it over on over, there drop, to my friendly other MacBook Air. I'll come over here, say accept. It's going to drop down into my downloads folder. We'll just open that up. So now I've got the bad one that doesn't work on my M1 Mac, but if I double click this guy here, it opens right up on the Intel Mac. But what you're going to notice is now I am going to run those same commands that I ran already on this package over on this Intel device. And this is where we're going to see the information that kind of varies. So if I run X attribute on this file, put a space there. Let's actually make this a little bit bigger. So make sure you guys can see it. All right. So let's just run this. We're going to see that it is not SIP protected, but it does have this other metadata <coughs> assigned with it. Um, let me run this other command. So we're going to do code sign dash vv on this file ah all right now we're getting somewhere so now we're seeing that it's actually got some problems with it and if i run this gatekeeper command now you're going to see that it does the same it, it provides some very similar data you're going to see that Gatekeeper is telling us, or the, the security subsystem for Gatekeeper is telling us that a sealed resource is missing or invalid. And then if I look at the code sign, it's given me m multiple ideas that this thing is messed up. This, this app is messed up. First thing I want to show is that if I open up the one that I copied over from the M1 system, let's just go take a look at the version you're going to see that it's it's 1401 and all of these numbers are going to be the same except for the last two so this is dot one dot three if I open up the Intel version of Safari and I go and open up And really, this is a universal app on both of these systems, this Safari. It's just when I say Intel version, I'm just meaning that this is the Safari that was on Big Sur on my Intel MacBook Air. So now I'm opening up this version. You're going to see that the previous version was 1.3. This version is 51.8. So it's a way later version. So what I want to do is I'm going to take this version and I'm going to send it over to the M1 Mac and we're going to see if that'll work. So let's airdrop that guy over to our other Apple Ninja MacBook Air. Click accept and we're going to see that Here's the version from the Intel, the later version. And I've now got Safari working on my M1 Mac without the issues. It is the later version. You need to get that later version. So some things that I tried doing during my troubleshooting, I tried to change the permissions. So 
let me just uh so i tried doing a ch mod uh, minus r and then a 755 applications safari i did that i did all sorts of stuff i even tried replacing the files that over on this intel mac if we look it says file added and file missing so this file that was missing i tried adding because it looked like it was messed up and then this file that it says was added wasn't even there so i tried fixing this application but it just did not work i think it was just a really old version of safari uh, actually i believe it was on 11.0 that that was probably delivered with and the M1 Mac was upgraded and that Safari never changed 14.0.1. Uh, some of the other things that I tried to do is I actually went into my applications folder. I went like this um, and tried to get info on it. Someone recommended, hey, open it up using Rosetta. I was like, you know, it's worth a try. I'll give it a shot. Double click it, throws a unexpected problem error so yep that did not work um, I also tried downloading um, this utility that is called UPX and it required me installing homebrew downloading UPX running it that did not fix it either for me but I have a feeling there's a lot of these issues out there. So I'm kind of curious what kind of issues you guys are seeing on your systems uh, for apps. Please leave those names down in the comments and actually tell me if any of these tips helped you out in fixing your apps. Um, I'm going to see what other information I can find out about this. If I figure out a way to fix this app, I will definitely do a follow-up video. Make sure to get subscribed so you hear about the latest content that's coming out and all these fixes and everything that's going to be happening with Big Sur and all this app compatibility. You guys have an amazing night. Take care.